Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current fights of 22nd March 2024. So unfortunately today, e-paper websites are already down. So because of that, I can't able to download Hindu newspaper. But from morning onwards, I'm doing a lot of lot of research and I waited till 9.30. So time is 9.30 now. So I waited from morning till now whether this issue will be resolved and I can able to uh, like download the newspaper. But unfortunately, I can't. So I don't want to miss this Hindu analysis at any cost. So that I did a lot of research and I came up with important articles in our today's Hindu newspaper and we are going to see those newspaper as usual with dimensions and connecting with the different subjects. So please do adjust today so we are not going to have newspaper PDF today that's it clear okay so now let us see the first article so this image I found so it is about BRO broad border roads organization so now here BRO is clearing snow on this Leh Manali highway. Okay, so here I want to tell you one important dimension where you can expect prelims based question here is tunnels. Tunnels and connecting with. Because Sela tunnel is in use. Okay, so you have to see like tunnels where they are located and connecting which and which areas. So from this point of view, there is a chance of getting question in your prelims from your geography point of view. Clear? So here you have to know about broader road organization. So you have to see dimensions like what is this BRO? And what are the functions of this BRO and what are its mandate and this topic is important from your international relations which comes in the GS paper too. Why I am saying this BRO is related to international relations because it, this organization is responsible for development of roads. So how this development of roads is related to this international relations? So this development of roads happens in international borders. For example, border between India and Myanmar, India and uh, Bangladesh, India, Nepal, India, Bhutan, like that. So whenever we are going for development of roads in this international borders, it is a sole responsibility of this BRO. Okay, so from that point of view, this article is important from international relations. And even, you know, this infrastructure, development projects, transport, which comes under our GS paper 1 and as well as GS paper 3. So from economy point of view, how this development of infrastructure leads to overall economic growth. And even you have to see like what is the role of transportation as well. So from this point of view, this article is at most important. And even you have to see like geographical locations where BRO is developing the roads. So from that point of view, from GS paper 1, geography place. Okay, clear? So now let us go back to our notes and we are going to see like where exactly, what are the functions of this BRO and where are the development projects. So now, let us see this some facts regarding this BRO. So what does this BRO is about? So BRO, it was conceived and raised in 1960s. So during the period of our late Prime Minister, that is Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru period itself, yes, BRO came up into picture. And BRO is very important for development and even coordination with the network of roads between India and other countries. Especially in northern and northeastern border regions of the countries, so the development of this road projects will be taken up by this BRO. And the works under the administration of control of Ministry of Defense. So this BRO which comes under the 
which ministry ministry of defense so this is very important prelims point and even it has diversified into large spectrum of construction and as well as development works so not only the development of roads but even it will be indulging in other areas like development of air fields building any projects defense works and tunneling projects so these will be also taken up by this bro and what are the achievements of this bro so far yes so this type of achievements you can write as case studies or examples in your essay and as well as in your mains answer so you have to know these points also so if we're talking about this achievements bro is more than 6 decades that means around more than 60 years so it has constructed over around 61000 kilometers of roads and around 900 bridges and four tunnels and 19 air fields in challenging conditions especially across the borders between india bhutan india myanmar india afghanistan and as well as in even in this tajikistan also like with the foreign countries also we are having this and as you know like you may get a question like how india went for development projects across this india and afghanistan border so we are sharing a very small boundary with this afghanistan but actually yes i will draw the map so that you will be getting correct picture so what is happening so this is our northern part right so here somewhere we are sharing boundary with afghanistan but this area which is under PO okay that is park occupied kashmir region so on map if you see yes we are sharing border with afghanistan but in reality okay in practical this area is coming under park occupied kashmir so we are not having like direct boundary under india's administration it is under administration of pakistan itself but even in the foreign countries also with the help of this bro india is going for development projects for example in afghanistan and as well as tajikistan and 2020 to 2023 bro completed around 103 infrastructure projects and an even like construction of shayog bridge in eastern ladakh and steel arch simon bridge in load class in arunachal pradesh and ayong in kinki road so these were the some important achievements and developments which are done by this bro so this is first very important article from your today's newspaper point of view yeah and now let us move on to next topic today is world water day so i wish you a very happy world water day and one sincere request from my side is please don't waste water yes water is very precious resource now because many cities like bangalore delhi and hyderabad some metropolitan areas they are facing this water crisis so water crisis is not only in the urban areas but even yes this problem had been started in rural areas because of climate change and because of exploitation of water resources yes or no there are many reasons so please don't waste water because especially water insecurity is rising in our country why what might be the reason so if you see population wise yes we are the most populous country okay if you see the details of the data of 2024 census 100% i can say india is going to beat even china that is the thing which said by united nation population prospects report and if you see land area land area is less but population is more so to satisfy the needs of each and every people yes we are going for exploitation of water so that is an important reason why we are facing water insecurity so now let us see this article it is talking about how water insecurity is affecting women so this is one important topic so now let us see dimension so this article is talking about water insecurity and effect on women 
So we can see lots and lots of dimensions here. So I will let you know. Okay. So first let us see about this water insecurity. So you have to see what exactly meaning or definition of water insecurity. And you have to see from geography point of view, from GS paper 1, geography point of view, you can see like in which areas we can see this water insecurity in India. So, you can take examples of urban areas, around 3 to 4 examples of urban areas and also in rural areas. Okay. And... You can see like what are the reasons of this water insecurity. And even you can add from GS paper 3, there is environment point of view like what is the impact of climate change. What is the impact of climate change on this water insecurity. Okay. And you have to see what is its outcome. outcome on our economy of the country why because if you see in any industries like in our secondary sector or manufacturing sector so water plays a very important role for example in many areas we are using water as coolant yes or no and you have to see like what is the impact on society Okay, impact on education if the schools, universities, colleges, if they are not providing this water, then what will happen? And you have to see what is the impact of water security on the health of the people. Without water, we can't survive. Even our human body is made up of water. Okay, and you have to see like how this water is creating wars between the countries. That is from international relations. So it is about water wars. And if there is any river which is flowing here. Okay. So we are trying to divert the water from one area to another area. That concept is called as interlinking of rivers. Okay. Interlinking of rivers. And even you have to see like what are the measures can be taken. Okay, what are the measures can be taken regarding how to overcome this problem of water insecurity. And you have to see some programs of government like Jal Jeevan Mission. It is trying to provide drinking water. Is yes or no? And even you can see like state wise steps taken but in our state of Telangana we have one scheme called as Mission Bhagiratha. So here in which you in which state from you like from your state you have to see like state specific schemes so that you can remember them from longer time right. So in this all dimensions you have to see regarding this water insecurity and now let us see about how it is going to impact women. So, women plays a very important role in ensuring water security for that family. Yes or no? So, women is a person who is going outside their homes to fetch water. And even they will be walking some miles of distance to bring the water. So, it is a work of women. So, we can see like gender stereotype here. And especially girls will be also involved in drinking of water so especially whenever girls are moving outside they will be facing some challenges like increasing of dropouts of school and even they will be facing sexual harassment okay and even there will be impact on children as well and women and girls they are losing their productive time they will be losing their productive time in fetching of water. So in this way, they are facing lots and lots of issues. So you have to see what is the impact on women okay, in this water insecurity.
okay so all these are the different dimensions that you have to think from this article point of view and there are two articles in our newspaper today regarding this water insecurity and we are going to see them together so let us see why it is in news because of world's water day okay so recently national sample survey came up with 17th round of multiple indicator survey which says that about 41 percentage of rural households they are lacking access to safely managed drinking water with their households and we can see like lots and lots of geographical disparities are seen like in some areas there are good water sources in some areas there is no water facility they are facing droughts right so in some areas they are having good enough rainfall of 100 to 200 centimeters but in some areas there is less than 20 to 30 centimeters of rainfall so in that time we need to go for harvesting of water water harvesting is very important and water management is also very important so here this data says that 41 percentage of rural households they have lack of access to this drinking water with their households and even we are seeing like geographical disparities that means the changes from one area to another area is seen to access safe water though declining continue to persist like even if you are moving from one area to another area so there is change in the availability of water and the distance to the principal source of water drinking water for those households like 0.2 to 1.5 kilometers that means households if they want to bring the water they have to go for 0. that is 200 meters to 1.5 kilometers distance and India makes around 18 percentage of world's population and the share of water resources is less than 5 percent and even there are many things which are suggesting that there is lack of access to water that can cause considerable uh, stress among the households so whenever there is lack of proper access to the water so water is very essential for drinking purpose for cleaning purpose for bathing for domestic use for everything water is very important so if there is lack of water means that will be increasing the stress among the households and in water scarce areas or among households whose principal water source lies outside their household premises and water collection is typically perceived as a gendered activity that means women it is a woman is responsible for bringing of water that is a gender activity and this increased burden on women to bring water and even girls they also falls under this increased burden and water insecurity affects women's everyday lives like household dynamics and even social relationships that will be going to change whenever they are going outside to fetch the water and even girls whenever they are going for fetching of water it will be also affecting school attendance and increasing of dropouts and even academic performance of the girls is decreasing and women they also face gender based violence during the commute for water collection and even they will be leading to the impact on this mental health of girls as less women so this is about this topic and now let us see one more important data regarding waterscape it is about united nations world water development report so as you all know that water insecurity is not like a single country's problem but even many countries are facing this problem because global climate change so because this global climate change entire world is facing this problem right so global challenge for securing access to clean water persists for about 2 billion people and now day by day there is increase in the demand for the water is rising so beyond threatening our basic individual human needs this scarcity also poses a risk to our collective prosperity and peace so today is March 22nd so we are celebrating 31st World Waters Day and the theme of this year is leveraging water for peace okay leveraging water for peace and recently World Water Assessment Program of UNESCO so came up with a report that is water for prosperity and peace and now let us see what this report is about 
because whenever you are seeing any report in news you can get a question either prelims or mains okay from upsc point of view so you have to know at least what is that report is about and what it is saying at least some small details so here this 2024 report is describing about how developing and maintaining a secure and equitable water future underpins prosperity and peace for all and how poverty and inequality social tensions and conflict can amplify water insecurity and even it calls attention to the complex and interlinked relationships between sustainable water management prosperity and peace describing how progress in one dimension can have positive often essential and repercussions on the others like it says that yes with this water we are having interlinked relationship like we have to focus on like sustainable water management and we have to focus on prosperity and we have to peace so all these are interlinked dimensions so that we can address this problem of water insecurity and if you're talking about some facts regarding this united nations world water development report so it is united nations flagship report on water so it will be doing assessment on overall state how it is using managing the world's fresh water resources so they are talking about only fresh water resources so this will be one important prelims fact and also it is having an aim to provide decision makers with tools to formulate and to implement sustainable water policies and practices and even they are focusing on annual report annual report will be released okay that is by unesco's world water assessment program on behalf of united nations water family and it is funded by government of italy each report represents coherent and integrated response of united nations system to fresh water related issues and they will be also focusing on the emerging challenges because day by day because of advancement in science and technology and because of climate change we are getting new and new challenges so we have to address all those new challenges and we have to remain among shining example of united nations delivering as one okay so these are the some important things that you have to remember and now let us see next topic so next topic is about one important development of isro and this topic is at most important from your science and technology and there is high chance of getting your prelims based question from this topic so here I will tell you some dimensions like how can you expect questions in your science and technology. So from science and technology, 99% of your prelims questions, they will be from your current affairs. And there you have to see like recent developments. Okay, you can see like recent developments. And you have to focus on especially space sector and defense sector. So in space, you can get question regarding vehicles. Okay, launching vehicles like PSLV, GSLV like that and developments in that vehicles. And you have to see like space missions. So not only of India, that is not only of ISRO, but even you can expect missions of NASA and European Space Agency, Chinese Space Agency, JAXA, Roscomus. Okay, and you have to see like recent missions of ISRO like Chandrayaan 3 and you have to see like what is this Aditya. And even from defense, you can get question regarding this Agni 5. Okay, recent technology, multiple reusable target technology. And you can see like the different agreements we made with different countries. Okay, and especially from biotechnology. So, for example, Genome India project is in news. So, from that, you can get a question and we achieve the target of genoming sequencing of around 10,000 genomes and we came with the database so there is a high chance of getting question from this genome india project and biotechnology is very important 
and these areas you can expect the questions from science and technology don't leave these areas so now let us see the context it says that the indian space research organization that is isro isro has successfully conducted pushpak reusable landing vehicle so you can get a question like recently pushpak is in news what is it related to it is related to reusable landing vehicle that is reusable landing vehicle and this experiment had been done by this isro so now let us see some facts regarding this reusable landing vehicle pushpak so pushpak it is a winged technology demonstrator okay it is a winged technology demonstrator and has been developed by isro that is indian space research organization it is to explore and to validate technologies which are essential for achieving a fully reusable launch vehicle okay so this rlv reusable landing vehicle pushpak it is a winged technology and it is demonstrated and it has been developed by isro it is one of the great achievement that i can see and it is used to explore and validate technologies essential for achieving and fully reusable launch vehicle and these technologies they include especially hypersonic flight so it includes hypersonic flight autonomous landing and powered cruise flight among the others so what is the significance of this pushpak here is pushpak represents a significant step towards developing low cost access to space so whenever we are using the same thing like when we are using again okay with that landing vehicle so we can decrease the cost of this space explorations and if you are focusing on this reusability isro aims to reduce the cost of the space missions up to 80% so that we can have more and more explorations with this reusable vehicles and we can make this space exploration more sustainable and more accessible for research and even for commercial purpose so in this way we can also move forward or run forward in this new space era and let us see next topic that is about supreme court uh, supreme court forms a uh, expert panel to balance busted conservation with sustainable energy goals so actually i was very much attached with this topic and number of times if i read this topic i will be feeling like so sad because these indian bustards they are critically endangered birds and they are very heavy birds and they are heavy flying birds so whenever they are flying so they will be hitting this electric lines and they are getting electric shock and electrocution and they are dying so electrocution is one of the important reason for the decreasing of this birds number so now let us see the dimensions so dimensions are like whenever you are seeing any species per se animal species or plant species or any bird species so they are very important for your upsc and if you see like if you are seeing like any species for example now here we are seeing like great indian bustard so you have to see important features of that bird so you have to imagine how this bird will be and you have to see the images of that uh, bird so that it will be helpful for long term memory as well so you have to see like important features and how can we differentiate that so and so bird with other bird species so this is the first important one and next one is you have to see habitat so from this habitat you can expect questions in your prelim statements like they are found only in india they are found in india and bhutan india and pakistan india and nepal like that so you have to see exact habitat and you have to see like what are the threats you have to see like what are the threats faced by this bird so why their number is decreasing day by day and you have to see like what are the conservation methods what are the conservation methods taken by the government to improve the number of that so and so species 
and you have to see last that is protection status. So whenever you are seeing this protection status, you have to see from three areas. So first one is IOC and red list. What is the category? It's the first one. And this one is sites according to sites under which appendix you are listed under. And you have to see under which schedule under this Wildlife Protection Act. So these are the some important dimensions and you have to think whenever you are seeing any species in use. Clear? Okay. So if you have any doubts, please post your doubts in comment box so that I will try to resolve them in the next class. Okay, let us see why it is in use. So the Supreme Court constituted an expert committee and this committee will take some responsibilities to provide recommendations regarding converse, uh, conservation and as well as protection of endangered great Indian bursted population with countries international commitments to promote renewable source of energy. So we have to promote this renewable source of energy. On another side, we have to focus on this conservation of animals and protection of this endangered species, right? So it is going to give you like this committee is going to give you like recommendations. How can we balance these both? So if you see the details, it says that the large winged birds, this large winged birds, they are on the brink of extinction. And with one of the causes being the frequent collision. So they are coming up with hitting of this electric wires, high tension electric wires. So it is an important reason for the decreasing of this number of great Indian buster day by day. And especially we can see their habitats, their core habitats in Gujarat and as well as in Rajasthan. And a three judge bench headed by Chief Justice of India set a blanket direction given by the Apex Court in April 2019 for undergrounding high voltage. So we have to uh, go for re, uh, go for uh, removing of those uh, high power lines upset and we have to go for underground high voltage and low voltage power. So this is the one recommendations but it has not been implemented. And the committee will explore the other alternatives to balance sustainable development goals because we are very much near to the target of 2030 to achieve the sustainable development goals. Right, so this committee will be also exploring like what are the alternatives that are present to balance sustainable development goals and conservation of the birds. And even this committee will also recommend some additional measures to identify additional priority areas also. And if you see some facts regarding this great Indian bustard, scientific name is Adotis nigriceps. So even it is a state bird of Rajasthan. And it is one of the most critically endangered. So the number is less than 100. And this bird is considered as a flagship grassland species because the habitat of this uh, bird will be seen in mostly the grasslands only. So whenever we are having a good number of this uh, bait in the bustard, we can say the health of this grassland is good. That means I can say this also can be considered as indicator species. And this one is its population is confined mostly to Rajasthan and Gujarat but very low population is seen in other states like Maharashtra, Karnataka and even AP as well. So if you are talking about vulnerability, so the bird is under constant threats because they are coming and colliding with these electric wires and hunting habitat loss and even widespread alteration of agriculture and agriculture expansion is also happening. So these are the some important threats. And apart from that, if you see this protection status, so these birds are listed under critically endangered under IUCN red list. And even under the sites, they are listed under appendix 1. And even under this convention on migratory species, they are also listed under appendix 1. In this Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, they are listed under this Schedule 1. So it is getting at most protection under these acts. So I will show you how this bird looks like. This is one of my favorite birds. So I am trying to get the doll of this bird but I am not getting. So if it is available, I will be taking this for my kids. Yes, so this is about this great Indian bustard. 
So these are the utmost important topics that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So tomorrow we are going to have as usual Hindu newspaper PDF along with this notes. Okay. So I don't know what happened with that server. So we have to wait and see and we have to pray for the God to resolve this issue as soon as possible by tomorrow's Hindu news analysis. Okay, so now let us see where can you download this paper. Here you can download the notes in this Rathod's IES classes telegram channel. Please do join this channel so that you will be getting updates. And this is our website that is Rathod's IS Academy website. And if you are facing any problem regarding any subject, okay, like history, polity, geography, like that. So you can take the single module or single subject here and the cost is very less. Okay, it is below 3000 rupees. So you can take those courses. You will be having the great uh, clarity regarding the topics for sure. And we are going to conduct free prelims mentorship test tomorrow okay so tomorrow is saturday right so tomorrow we are going to have this test at 10 a.m so if you want to know how your preparation is and how you have to change your strategy in these next two months to clear prelims so come and take that test and that test is conducted only offline in this ashoknagar hyderabad and address is also pinned in the description box and it is near pillar 36 okay and one more thing is to write that test you have to do registration and this registration is free for all so you can come and you can take the registration and after registration you can come to the office tomorrow at 10 a.m and you can take the test and after taking test you will be having one more work to analyze how you performed in your test so we are going to give you one prelims evaluation form after this test and you have to fill the details based on your performance and you will be having one-to-one -one mentorship after that test and we are going to give you like advice so based on that advice if you are following that advice for the next two months there is 99 percent of chance of clearing this upsc prelims and one more thing here is not only we are conducting tests we are also conduct we are also providing free prelims regarding classes from 5 to 6 30 pm okay from monday or tuesday because monday many of them say that is uh, like holy so that if it if it if you are celebrating holy on sunday you will be having classes from monday or else from tuesday from 5 to 6 30 pm you will be having free prelims classes and exclusively prelims regarding topics will be discussed there and there will be no wasting of your time okay we are discussing only the topics and there's high chance of getting questions from those topics for sure so come and test your knowledge and change your strategy so that you can achieve your goal of clearing prelims 2024 i wish you very all the best and if you want to take registration on online so you can call me on this number or you can text me on this number 8074765513 so that we will be sending you the registration form document and fill the details and please send back so that your registration will be done and registration is compulsory to write examination and to attend the classes okay so that's all for today thank you so much for watching